The one man who probably knows more about circumcision than anybody else in the country lives in this New York City apartment house. The practice began about 1870 in the United States on a very small scale for the purpose of trying to prevent or cure masturbation, which was then believed to cause a wide array of diseases. Edward Wallerstein, not a doctor, a retired businessman, got interested in the subject, spent 12 years researching it, and wrote a widely respected book about it entitled Circumcision and American Health Fallacy. Painful penal surgery without anesthesia. If the American practice is correct, why is it that this practice is rejected by France, England, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, England, Japan, and dozens and dozens of other countries. When American doctors decided that there was no medical reason to take tonsils out, they just simply stopped taking tonsils out routinely. Now American doctors say there is no need for routine circumcision. Why don't they just stop circumcising? The subject is so overladen with these overtones of social and cultural and, and sexual and religious factors that they are afraid to touch it. And uh, physicians will say, well, we'll be neutral. We'll let the parents decide. And that's a cop-out. A cop-out. That's a stern indictment. But if there is one thing our look at this subject proves, it is that doctors do not do a very good job of explaining the facts of circumcision to parents. Um, you cannot remove normal, healthy, sexually functioning tissue without interfering with normal, healthy sexual functioning. And that's true for both the male and the female alike. The difference is profound. Let's get back uh, to leaving babies, poor little penises alone. <laughs> But in the United States, medical circumcisions also are performed routinely on about 85% of all male infants born each year. Last year, about one and a half million baby boys performed routinely, even though the prestigious American Academy of Pediatrics has declared there is no absolute medical indication for routine circumcision of the newborn. No medical reason at all. The United States is the only country in the world today in which this is done. Dr. William Gold of the Georgetown University School of Medicine describes it as elective surgery. There's, there's certainly no medical indication for routine circumcision. It's uh, basically being done for parental preference. If most of the time, if the father has been circumcised, then he wants his son circumcised. It's, a, it's basically a cosmetic operation. Here are some of the instruments used to perform a circumcision. There are a lot of myths about the purported medical benefits of this operation. Myths based on guesswork, old wives' tales, and an appalling lack of research and statistics. For the record, new medical evidence indicates that circumcision does not prevent penile cancer in males or cervical cancer in their wives. It has no effect on venereal disease, and it's not necessary for male personal hygiene. Plain old soap and water does the job just as well. Opposition to routine medical circumcision is spreading rapidly throughout the nation. One of the country's most active opponents lives here, in this beautiful, unlikely spot, rural Washington State, near the city of Bellingham. Mrs. Rosemary Weiner is a childbirth instructor who concluded that the operation is painful and unnecessary only after her three sons had all been circumcised. Since then, her research has been in touch with hundreds of people, including many doctors. I began still basically neutral about it. I imagined that circumcision had a lot of benefits. This is what American middle class people have been led to believe, that it's supposedly it's cleaner and it's healthier. And I, So I was basically neutral. My only concern was that it was painful for the baby. As a result of the research that I've done, all the things I've found out, I've come out against it. Well, based on your experience from the mail you're getting, it would seem that many obstetricians and pediatricians are ignorant on this subject. I absolutely. I think many of them think of it in terms of the foreskin as something that needs to be cut off, as if it came into the world cut on dotted line. <laughs>